This is a very important story. The important story. In the midst of COVID-19, it's an historic opportunity to look at the facts of the world as it is, and then to focus on the solutions to some of our greatest problems. In the 75 years since the United Nations was founded, the human race has never had to face a set of challenges like we do right now. But together, we can overcome them. It's a myth that each and every one of us doesn't have the ability to change the world dramatically and quickly. There have been enormous shifts in power and behavior to the benefit of all humanity, and it can happen again. Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. These are some of the things that must be done. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. September 2020. The world is still in the grip of a global pandemic. There have been more than 27 million confirmed cases, and more than 900,000 people have died. Billions of people have been in lockdown for months. Lives and livelihoods have been threatened and lost. But as some lockdowns are easing, People are emerging into a different, uncertain world with a new appetite for change. Today, we feel the weight of history on our shoulders. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown how fragile the world is. A microscopic virus has put us on our knees. And that fragility should make us humble. COVID-19 has been likened to an X-ray, exposing fractures in the skeleton of the societies we have built. A world with great inequality, which must be righted. And a world which must win the battle against climate catastrophe. The whole planet is at stake. So this is a moment to recognize that the way we have been moving leads nowhere and that we need to change course. The lockdowns also showed that our environment itself can change. In the Punjab, for the first time in generations, the Himalayas are visible once again. Lions have reclaimed the roads in Kruger National Park. In Venice, the canals run clear once more. And across Italy, dolphins have returned. If you look at the response of people to COVID-19, people dramatically change their lives. But people have shown an enormous capacity to adapt to new circumstances, an enormous capacity to change the way they live, the way they work, the way they organize themselves. So change is possible. The problem is political will. It is so decided. On the 25th of September, 2015, all United Nations member states signed up to the Sustainable Development Goals, a set of solutions for the biggest problems the world faces. We're going to look at the four key areas where we must take urgent action, starting with climate and our planet.
Next door's on fire. Oh my god. Okay. I'm scared. You're at risk. Leaving now is the safest option, so leave now towards the beach and shelter in place. continue to file out from Australia about the devastating fires. This one, a satellite image from NASA. Rising death toll and massive evacuation in Indonesia and water swarm way to Jakarta following the heaviest downfall in more than two decades. Worst plague of locusts to affect the region. The damage to pastures and crops could create, quote, severe consequences for the region where nearly 12 million people are coping. It could be the worst the area has seen in 20 years. This is a double whammy. You know, we're dealing with a cyclone and with exposure to COVID. Well, the fires raging in Northern California have now become some of the largest in state history. More than 12,000 firefighters are currently battling the places that have San Francisco Bay Area smothered by some of the worst air quality on the planet. Valley reaches an all-time high of 100 Delhi on Tuesday recorded the hottest day, spiking above 100 degrees important issue that we need to be talking about. Climate change is here now and it is killing people right now. The people who are looking at it right in the face. the next eight to 10 years is going to determine the quality of life for the next 100 to 200 years. We all watched with amazement when exactly one year ago, young people from all over the world took to the streets to express their feeling that we're not doing enough about climate change. Today we take a stand for modern nature. That we're not treating it like the emergency it is. It's a year later now. Have we done enough? No, we have not. And climate change is only part of this story. Our rainforests are disappearing at an extraordinary rate. One football field of rainforest is destroyed every six seconds. One million plant and animal species are on the brink of extinction. By 2050, there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish. And so climate change and our treatment of the natural world are colliding and exacerbating each other to create a perfect storm. This cannot go on. You know it. I know it, and we know what we need to do. We need to reduce global emissions by 50% by 2030. To do this, we need a rapid but just transition to renewable energy. That means an end to the building of new coal power stations and an end to subsidizing of fossil fuels. Government should also shift the tax burden from payrolls to carbon. Taxing carbon rather than people will increase output and employment while reducing emissions. And we need to stop deforestation in its tracks, planting trees instead of chopping them down. We need to think about what we eat and how we produce food. 
embracing healthy, nutritious diets, sustainable farming methods, and reducing food waste. The climate crisis is an opportunity. Renewable energy is cheaper than fossil fuels. Thousands of businesses are working to go carbon neutral, and the opportunity to generate clean, safe, and decent jobs is enormous. The passion for protest can turn into a passion for changing all of our behavior to create a better, safer, just, sustainable world. The big question we have to ask ourselves now is this. As a species, are we going to be able to work together urgently to solve this? The clock is ticking. Poverty and inequality are universal. They undermine every society, everywhere. But poverty is not natural. It is man-made, so poverty is not inevitable. It's an area where the world has made huge progress in the past few decades. Just 30 years ago, there were 1.9 billion people living in extreme poverty, but that number has been transformed. In 2015, it fell to 734 million people. That's over a billion people lifted out of poverty. A billion people out of poverty was amazing. It was across the world we lifted people out of poverty. Across the world, more kids got into education. As across the world, maternal mortality was reduced. Um, across the world today, um, not many people will be left without access uh, to a mobile phone. And what that has done to empower them to, to access to education, to a livelihood, is huge. But still, almost 10% of the human race is living unbelievably harsh lives. This is largely determined by their circumstances at birth and these high levels of inequality work against better opportunities for all. Opportunities that could change the world. I want to tell you a story about 1999. I used to teach people how to write computer programs. And I had a very, you know, plush office and everything. And just outside of these offices, there was this large, sprawling, urban slum full of children. So one day I tried an experiment. I made an opening in the boundary wall that separated my offices from the slum. And then I fixed a computer so that from the other side of the wall, you could see the computer and a touchpad. On the first day, we saw this eight-year-old boy teaching a six-year-old girl how to surf. How on earth did he figure that out? How did he know what the computer was doing? Three months after I had first put their computer in the wall, the children said they wanted a faster processor and a better mouse. I asked them, how on earth do you know these words? Where did you learn this from? And they said, well, you, you've left a machine here that speaks only in English, so we had no option but to learn the language. Easy, isn't it? I repeated the hole-in-the-wall experiment for five years across the length and breadth of India in a village 300 miles away from Delhi. One girl is explaining to the other girl what a neuron is. They're just 12 years old. Wow. We have hope. We have an enormous potential of what children can achieve together if we let them. There is potential everywhere. 
We just have to unlock it. A huge amount depends on where public money is spent. More of it must urgently go into health. Into giving everyone a safety net. There is a revolution that is happening in education. Connecting every school, every person to the internet. This can be done. The recovery from COVID must lead to an economy that works for everyone. Let's start with tax. We have widespread tax concessions, tax avoidance, and tax evasion, which means that there's so much less money for all the crucial things. Many developing countries are weighed down by historical debts, spending more money on debt repayments than they are spending on health care. And then there's the importance of global investment in peace. The peace dividend for the world is immeasurable. And we must break the vicious cycle of corruption and increase the power of the people to keep check on the people in power. A free, independent media and responsible social media platforms that encourage healthy debate. Equality unleashes the potential of everyone to improve their own lives and contribute to the lives of everyone else. Whatever it is, Coronavirus has made the mighty kneel and brought the world to a halt like nothing else could. Our minds are still racing back and forth, longing for a return to normality, trying to stitch our future to our past and refusing to acknowledge the rupture. But the rupture exists. And in the midst of this terrible despair, it offers us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. Nothing could be worse than a return to normality. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine the world anew. This one is no different. It's a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, we can walk through it lightly, with little luggage, ready to imagine another world, and ready to fight for it. After the genocide and destruction of the Second World War, the United Nations was founded. Enshrined in its charter was the fact that all people are equal and entitled to the same respect, justice, and human rights. This remains a simple truth, and yet across the globe, the struggle is still being fought. There is a certain outrage for injustice right now. I think that that is happening in every sphere. I think we're at a moment where COVID perhaps has helped us realize that there is an intergenerational transition and that young people now are waking up to the calls that we've had for my generation, which have said, look, this is the opportunity you've got to make things change. I mean, they are rising up and that we are bringing young people to the table now, not as a token, but to help us shape and to take that baton, to take up the gauntlet and to move forward. People fighting for justice, but fighting for your justice, not just mine. And, and to see that without your justice, mine won't be fulfilled either. The world knows him as George. But I called him Perry. Yesterday we laid him to rest. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. I'm the big brother now. So it's my job to comfort my brothers and my sisters Perry's kids, and everyone who loved him. And that's a lot of people. 
I couldn't take care of George that day. He was killed, but I can make sure that his death would not be in vain. To make sure that he is more than another face on a t-shirt, more than another name on a list that won't stop growing. George called for help and he was ignored. Please listen to the call ringing out the streets across the world. People of all backgrounds, genders and races have come together to demand change. The people marching in the streets are telling you enough is enough. To the leaders, the people elected you to speak for them, to make positive change, you have the opportunity to make your names mean something too. If his death ends up changing the world for the better, and I think it will, then he died as he lived. It is on you to make sure his death is not in vain. Perry, look up at what you did, big brother. You changed the world. I hope you can rest in peace with power. Remember when I couldn't level up, I was trying, but I couldn't level up, it was rough, you see, stopping it like I had enough, then I contemplate giving up, yeah, if you're feeling like you can't level up, I'ma make you not stop at all, because right when you start feeling like you can't level up, that's when you have to shut the devil up, I remember when I couldn't level up, no, my money couldn't level up, Doing what I must, I'm like there's always another level up. That's why you always find me looking up. But sometimes in my life, you know my heart for rebel up. My hair rub on my fights in the club. Every day me try level up, so me striking them hard, me go hard until I get to God. You can do it, whoa, Never, 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 never stop. Come on, so pop away. You can do it for one. Never, 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 never stop. The ones so pop away. Now you're in a situation where you have no choice. You have to fight. Fight with people. Inequality for women is one of the world's great injustices, and it is an injustice that must be and will be swept away. 75% of parliamentarians are men. 73% of managerial decision makers are men. 67% of climate negotiators are men and 87% of the people at the peace table are men. Even though we know that when peace settlements include women, the negotiations and outcomes are more durable. Globally, almost one in five women has experienced violence in the past 12 months at the hands of a man they know. Women and girls do three times as much unpaid care and domestic work as men. The global gender pay gap is stuck at 16%. Every year, 12 million girls are married before 18. All of this has to change. It's time to stop trying to change women and start changing the systems that prevent them from achieving their potential. And this is the battle that women in this century will not lose. They are too strong and their voices will not be silenced. I was named after a girl. 
an Afghani folk hero who was killed in a battle. Just after I was born, my father got our family tree. It went back 300 years, but not a single girl or woman's name appeared on it. He decided to make me the first. He wrote Malala. That's me. When her father's school was closed down by the Taliban, Malala Yousafzai began to campaign for the right of young girls across the country to go to school. I have rights. I have the right of education. I have the right to play. I have the right to sing. I have the right to talk. I have the right to go to market. I have the right to speak up. Head, she is still in critical condition. She was airlifted to a military hospital in Peshawar, where she had surgery. As surgeons battled to save her life, vigils took place throughout the world. In this first photo released today, Malala's eyes are open and she peaked. We have some really good news to report tonight. Malala Yousafzai walked out of a London hospital today. Today, it is an honor for me to be speaking again after a long time. The thought that the bullet would silence us, but they failed. My message right now is to young people. Uh, we are living in a world where uh, things are not the way we want. Uh, we are getting a system, we are getting a world which is, uh, which is unequal, which is sexist, which is racist. We have systems that are discriminating against people. Uh, our climate, our environment is at risk. And there's so much that needs to be done. But I hope that young people, they stand up, they raise their voices, uh, they start their activism right now. Let your age not stop you. Oftentimes we are told that, you know, you have to be 40 and 50 to change the world. I do not believe in that. I think you can be a change maker right now. If you are 11, if you are 16, if you are, you know, 30, 40, change is possible anytime. And I want you to believe in yourself and make this world a fairer, more equal and a better place for each and every one. And once again, there are positive solutions that can turn things around fast. We need more women in positions of power at every level of government. The time has come for quotas that make sure women are equally represented in every country. It's time to make our laws equal so that every woman is entitled to a job and a national identification card and to own property. Women must be able to live free from violence and have the right to make decisions over their bodies and lives, especially in choosing if and when they marry. We must guarantee full access to sexual and reproductive health services and rights. We must provide the money to close the gap in girls' education. And there are important changes needed to achieve economic empowerment for women from equal access to finance, to ending the gender pay gap, to equal access to the digital world, from mobile bank accounts, to digital payment systems and digital education. It just doesn't make sense. Women are half of the population, but society does not treat them as equals. This is a legacy that needs to change here and now by changing our behaviors, but also by changing laws and common practices across the world. We must all make that happen now. Everyone can do their part to make it happen. We can create and enjoy green jobs, live healthier lives with cleaner air and better diets. And in more equal societies, all of us, men and women, can enjoy safer and more productive lives. 
There is power in every decision we make. We can shape society and the future of our planet and people in every choice we make. My final message is, let's be humble. Let's recognize our fragilities and let's understand that only in unity and solidarity we will be able to address them. It's true in each one of our countries. It's true at global level. And let's take profit of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations to think together how better we can organize the international community to address climate change, inequality, pandemics like the COVID-19, and so many other aspects that can only be solved if we join together and if we are able to have one common strategy, one common project, and uh, one common determination in favor of peace, of development, and human rights in the world. Brought someone some happiness Left this world a little